So, maybe you're experiencing a little bit of low back pain. Do you need an x-ray or an MRI to figure out what's going on? And does imaging actually improve our clinical outcomes? In this video, we'll go over indications for imaging as well as the relationship between some of the common findings we see on imaging and low back pain. Generally, whenever we're considering imaging, either an x-ray or an MRI for low back pain, we're looking for some sort of sinister pathology signaled by a red flag. The sinister pathologies for low back pain generally fall into four different categories. We have cancer, infection, fracture, or cauda equina syndrome. And so if we see any of these on imaging that were indicated by a red flag, then obviously that's going to change our treatment approach for low back pain and it's gonna warrant a referral to a specialist. When screening, if there's a possibility of a sinister pathology causing low back pain, we generally ask a couple of questions during the history that will signal if there's a red flag and if imaging is needed. For cancer, there are two questions that could be helpful. One is if that person has a history of cancer or if they have recent unexplained weight loss. Obviously, if somebody answers yes to either one of these questions, it doesn't mean that they absolutely have low back pain that is being caused by cancer. However, it does raise our suspicion and sees if we actually need to do a little bit more investigating. For fractures, we'd be asking about if there was major trauma involved or if there was a prolonged use of corticosteroids or immunosuppressors that would raise our suspicion of a spinal fracture. While quite rare, cauda equina syndrome and infection are the two other sinister pathologies that we generally screen for with low back pain. For an infection, we'll generally ask if there's the presence of a fever, history of corticosteroid use, or if there was IV drug usage. For cauda equina syndrome, which is where there's compression on the spinal cord, we'd be asking if there's saddle anesthesia, which is where there's numbness in the groin area, and then also if there's a sudden onset of bowel or bladder dysfunction. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't have any of those symptoms, but it's still probably a good thing to get an image of my low back to see if there's any structural things that are causing my low back pain. But let's take a look at how imaging actually influences clinical outcomes. In this systematic review, they looked at routine imaging for low back pain. And what they found was that immediate imaging didn't result in better outcomes when looking at either pain or function when compared to usual care without immediate imaging. Interestingly as well in the systematic review is that in the studies that performed routine imaging for low back pain, they actually didn't find any cases of sinister pathology. So even though they were imaging every single person, they actually didn't find any sinister pathology by accident. Additionally, there is research that suggests that early imaging could be a factor in transitioning from acute to chronic low back pain. In this study, there are three different factors that were considered non-concordant care. Prescription of opioids, imaging, and then referral to a specialist. And what they found was that with each additional factor that was included in someone's prescription for low back pain, that their risk of transitioning from acute to chronic low back pain increased. So with just one of those factors, the odds were 1.39, for two factors, it was 1.88, and then with all three factors being present, the risk would increase to 2.16. So let's say after all of this, we still decide to get imaging for low back pain. What is the relationship between some of those common findings that we see on imaging and low back pain? Well, this is where things get a little bit muddy. And that's because a lot of findings that we do see on imaging either have a very small association or no association with either current or future low back pain. And that includes a lot of things like disc herniation, decreased disc height, uh, degeneration, or even modic changes and stenosis. One example that I find helpful to help explain this is if we look at this picture here of all these people barbecuing, who in this picture is actually the one doing the barbecuing? We might think that it's probably the guy with the orange apron on, but because it's a static image, we actually don't know if he's just wearing an orange apron because he wants to, or if he was the actual one that was barbecuing. And that's similar to what we see with imaging. We take a static picture of the low back, but we actually don't know what is actually causing the pain. We just see what the structure looks like, but the association isn't that strong. And we frequently see structural changes in those without low back pain. So it's really challenging to pinpoint a specific structure that's causing low back pain based on imaging. Now, this isn't to say that imaging is completely useless. The same group that did the last study also did this study where they were looking at the same structural changes in those with low back pain. And what they found is that those changes were more commonly present in those with low back pain. The problem is, is that one, it's just association, so we actually don't know if those things actually are causing the pain. And two, they're probably unlikely to change what our treatment approach is. Unless they're a surgical candidate, 
they're going to be treated with conservative treatment. So those imaging findings don't actually influence what we're going to do with treatment. But of course, if imaging is indicated, then we should take it. If there's red flags and we're suspecting that there's a sinister pathology, then imaging can be performed. But for majority of people presenting with low back pain, imaging isn't actually needed. So thank you for watching this video on imaging for low back pain. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more of my content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. If you wanna be notified of future videos, hit the bell icon below. There's also a video here on treatment for low back pain. I'll see you guys in the next video.